Hi, my name is Brianna Newman, and today I'm going to use Patricia Benner's model of skill acquisition in nursing to discuss the problem of a lack of formal orientation for adjunct nurse faculty. Although the Institute of Medicine does recommend that nurses engage in lifelong learning, that was their recommendation in 2010, and a lot of nurses are actually going back to get their master's or their DNPs, there are a lot of nurses either going to become teachers or adjunct nursing faculties at nursing schools or becoming clinical nurse leaders that are lacking the appropriate education or resources to function to the best of their capabilities. Organizations like the AACN who do promote the hiring of nursing faculty are acknowledging that there are difficulties in that transition from the clinical aspect to the academic one, and they even call this role strain. Nurses moving from the bedside to the academic setting are experiencing insufficient preparation in the knowledge and skills for education. This transition can be a very dynamic developmental process with associated emotional work, critical tasks, and learning those new role boundaries and assuming new identities. And nurses are often promoted or hired into these positions without the benefit of formal orientation to their new leadership positions or their clinical positions, etc. This work role transition is like we were saying, assimilating new values and norms and developing new identity. There has been minimal research conducted on this transition from clinician to academic educator. So the reason why I use Patricia Benner's model of skill acquisition in nursing is because her theory proposes that transition from novice to expert is nonlinear. This is very applicable to nurses who might be uh, advanced beginners or experts at the bedside, but then once moving to the academic world might feel like they are back to being novice or back to being just competent. The Venner model addresses a problem of a lack of education for adjunct nurse faculty, and it advocates the fact that experiential learning is growing through transmitting that learning in practical settings. Patricia Benner was uh, born in August 1942 in Hampton, Virginia. She associated, she obtained, sorry, her associates and bachelor's degree in nursing from Pasadena City College. Apart from being the author of From Novice to Expert, Excellence in Power Nursing Practice, and developing her model of skill acquisition in nursing, she was also the director of the Carnegie, Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching National Nursing Education Study, which was very extensive and interviewed many, many different nursing schools and educators. Patricia Benner's model of skill acquisition was influenced by Virginia Henderson, which was another theorist, and some of her Berkeley professors. She also drew from the work of several existential philosophers, as well as examining Socrates' account on theory and also uh, examining Hippocrates and Plato. And she definitely adapted her model from the Dreyfus model of skill acquisition, and she adapted that model to nursing. In her writings, Benner explains that practical knowledge without theoretical understanding is problematic. Experience alone, she believes, is not sufficient and should be always tied to theory. She examines Socrates' characteristics of what a theory should be like. And as the quote says at the bottom, practice without theory cannot alone produce fully skilled behavior. Theory without practice has even less chance of success, meaning that practice and theory have to go hand in hand.
The Dreyfus model of skill acquisition explains how a person goes through five stages of different perceptions of their task as skill improves. Experiential learning is essential in order to progress from novice to expert. And Patricia Benner took this model and adapted it to nursing. The major concepts of Benner's model go from stage one through five, like the Dreyfus skill acquisition model. And it begins with stage one, which is the novice. Apart from her model of skill acquisition and nursing, Patricia Benner also developed the caring and nursing practice model. She emphasized a lot on the need for nursing students specifically to understand illness and how it affects a person by writing narratives, by spending time with patients and seeking to understand that process. Her meta paradigm concepts are a little different and instead of environment she speaks of situation saying that people inhabit their world rather than live in an environment and she also adds stress and coping saying that stress is realizing that smooth functioning has been disrupted and that coping is not necessarily an antidote for stress but what one does regarding that disruption. <clears throat> strengths and weaknesses of Benner's model um, are the following strengths were that her model definitely supports the findings that there is a lack of support for nurses transitioning from the bedside to the academic world Using the model of skills acquisition helps nurses understand how expertise develops and helps also nurse educators know how to support nurses transitioning roles or managers supporting other nurses becoming clinical nurse leaders. Anderson, in her research, also examined the work of nurses transitioning or retaining being a bedside nurse while adding the new role of being an educator and she explained these different phases, which were also very similar to the skills acquisition phases. Weaknesses are that Patricia Benner uh, focuses more on the student nurse or their newly graduated nurse more than talking about also how advanced nurses can transition in and out of these roles. I really appreciated this quote in one of the interviews with Patricia Benner in 2011 where she states that DNPs and nurse practitioners and graduate students need to learn how to teach because that is what is going to continue developing the nursing profession. Benner's uh, model for skill acquisition has been used very often as a rationale for career development. It's the basis of a lot of schools of nursing theory and curriculum development. And it has also been for the continuing education in nursing. Like the IOM, IOM emphasized that nurses need that continuing education. Her model has been used to prove that. Um, many research articles have used her model recently in describing either the lack of education for continuing education or nurses transitioning into roles of being leaders or clinical nurse specialists or managers, etc., or nurses transferring into that academic setting and not really having the education needed, or also to examine the phenomenon of the perceptual novice, which we will discuss in the next slide.
So the authors of this study wanted to examine the perceptual novice phenomenon. I honestly had never heard of it before prior to reading this nursing article. And what the authors wanted to do was, number one, investigate if uh, nurse leaders knew what this was. So they selected a sample of nurses employed in one of the four roles, uh, either clinical educator, clinical nurse specialist, APN, nurse practitioner, etc. They wanted to introduce the participants into the perceptual novice concept. They also wanted to request their feedback about this concept and identify any essential skills in the nursing practice area that may not be performed regularly enough for nurses to become expert. And they also wanted to identify strategies that could be used to move nurses from novice to expert. So first of all, what is that perceptual novice phenomenon? Well, Benner in her book, Expertise in Nursing Practice, says that not all people achieve expertise. Even with a lot of experience in a specialty area, a person might just be experienced in that area or be an expert in that model in a specific area. But then when it comes to other situations, might be down to the advanced beginner phase or competent phase. The authors of this study noticed that a lot of nurses entering a clinical area where they have no prior clinical experience might again be in the novice advanced beginner phase. Apart from that, some nurses that do stay in a specific area are unable to advance certain skills such as NG tube insertion or chest tube dressing change. And so with some skills, they are consi consistently stuck in that perceptual novice phenomenon and they are unable to advance into becoming an expert. So the authors wanted to see what were those barriers. They interviewed the clinical nurse leaders, like I mentioned before, and they asked them open-ended questions to identify any nursing qualities or environmental influence that they perceived had an impact on the nursing staff's learning. And they also interviewed the nursing participants from these different units. The nurses' uh, questionnaire's answers showed that a motivation to learn a lack of personal responsibility, lack of time or fear of failing, or major obstacles in being able to advance in one's skills, as well as environmental influences such as workload or staffing issues or high staff turnover were some of the obstacles, again, that prevented nursing from being able to move from that perceptual novice to an expert. What the results showed after these clinical nurse leaders being interviewed was that when they were asked to identify a percentage of nurses in their respective units who could be described as a perceptual novice, a mean of 33% was reported. This is one in three nurses that these nurse leaders could see were stuck in that perceptual novice phase. That's pretty scary on any nursing unit, but that is a reality, obviously, as the authors researched this, that many times, because of all those different constraints and being able, not being able to have a continuing education and practicing different skills, one can be stuck in that uh, competent or novice phase with certain skills. The authors concluded that the challenge to nurse educators and those working in advanced nursing roles, such as charge nurses, managers, clinical nurse specialists, is being able to help nurses maintain their school competency and encouraging and providing a culture where there's no shame or fear in not being an expert yet. The following care plan or case study is an example of how Benner's model can be applied to a situation such as a nurse that has not been prepared to teach nursing students. The research has shown that role strain can cause a lot of anxiety on nurses not being prepared for their following roles. And that can lead in a knowledge deficit or anxiety related to not knowing the role expectations.
a goal would be for these nurses to be able to verbalize their concerns to the nursing faculty and for the nursing faculty to implement or create an orientation plan for these new adjunct nurses and assign mentors. Interventions would be, like we just spoke, assigning mentors or having the nurses be coached and go through checklists or modules in order to ensure that the nurse is feeling equipped to teach these nursing students. This second case study is actually based on a research study that was done uh, by these authors, Titzer, Shuri, and Hawk. And they actually developed a year-long program for nurses that wanted to evolve into a clinical leadership position. So the very similar interventions that could be applied to a nurse transitioning to become an adjunct nurse faculty or a nurse educator are applied and used here, and the Benner model is very applicable as well. A DNP nurse, uh, Waddell Sanita, addressed in her dissertation that nurses are often promoted or hired into leadership positions without the benefit of a formal orientation to those new positions. And the challenge of navigating the various expectations of the role of a clinical nurse leader, such as staffing patterns, payroll, disciplinary action process, can be very overwhelming. And this lack of formalized orientation process can really make these nurses feel unsupported and overwhelmed, exactly the same as nurses transitioning to that academic world. A lot of these nurses feel unsupported and overwhelmed at not knowing how to fulfill that role. So these authors, going back to this uh, research, did do that year-long program and they did make all the nurses that wanted to become nurse leaders go through the program. They had to do pre-assessments, they were assigned mentors and coaches, they had to do different uh, post-assessments also obviously to evaluate the knowledge gained and the efficacy of the program. They had to go through specific programs if they were going to be a nurse manager, etc., to be oriented. And the outcome showed that there was increased competency after the program completion, showing and validating that education and preparation for nurses into different roles is vital and that Patricia Benner's model is very applicable not only to nursing students and newly graduating nursing students learning in the clinical setting, but is also very, very applicable to us nurses who are transitioning into different roles of either nurse educator, or nurse practitioner, clinical nurse specialist. It is very important for us to be trained and educated into those new roles and expectations. These are the various resources used in order to explain the Benner skill acquisition model. I hope you were able to learn a little more today about her model. Thank you.